Welcome to the Indie Film Hustle Podcast, episode number 294. Instead of wondering when your next vacation is, maybe you should set up a life you don't need to escape from. Seth Godin. Broadcasting from the back alley in Hollywood, it's the Indie Film Hustle Podcast, where we show you how to survive and thrive as an indie filmmaker in the jungles of the film biz. And here's your host, Alex Ferrari. Welcome, my indie film hustlers, to another episode of the Indie Film Hustle Podcast. I am your humble host, Alex Ferrari. Today's show is sponsored by Black Box. Black Box is a new platform and community that is all about financial freedom for filmmakers like you. If you join Blackbox, you will be transformed from being a worker to being a maker of your own content. And you'll be making steady passive income from the global market. Blackbox currently allows you to upload your stock footage once, get it to many global agencies, and then allows you to share that passive income stream with your collaborators. Whether you want to submit old footage that's been sitting around in your hard drives or create brand new content, Blackbox is for you. It's really quite revolutionary. With Black Box, filmmakers can concentrate on making great content while Black Box takes care of all the business BS. Just visit www.blackbox.global to find out more. And today's show is also sponsored by Indie Film Hustle TV, the world's first streaming service dedicated to filmmakers, screenwriters, and content creators. If you want access to filmmaking documentaries, feature films about filmmaking, interviews with some of the top screenwriters and filmmakers in Hollywood, as well as educational online courses all in one place, IFH TV is for you. Just head over to IndieFilmHustle.tv. So guys, today on the show, I want to talk about this concept that all filmmakers are marketers. And I know that sounds very intimidating to a lot of you. They're like, I'm not a marketer. I'm just a filmmaker. I want to prove something to you guys. That if you've ever posted anything on social media, if you've ever tried to make a poster for your film or a trailer for your film or boost something on Facebook or on Twitter or on Instagram to get people to watch what you're doing, I hate to break it to you guys, but you are marketers. And once you start understanding and accepting that, that you have the power, like never before in history, to reach a mass audience to show people what you can do as filmmakers, as artists, as screenwriters, you have the power at your fingertips, literally on your phones. You can start doing this instantly. Now, I want to talk a little bit about marketing and about what filmmakers could do to help their marketing uh, abilities and, and and get their reach out there more. Now, I've talked about this on the show before, and I think a lot of people and a lot of filmmakers make mistakes when it comes to marketing regarding like how to get their movie out there. First of all, by picking the product or picking the, the art that they're going to put out there and then trying to reach an audience for it. I've had an entire episode about how you niche down. That is the, the future of independent filmmaking is to niche, 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 niche down, niche down, niche down. As I say, the riches are in the niches, you know, because you want to be able to create a product that you can hit a the smallest viable audience for. And let me explain what the smallest uh, viable audience is. You don't need millions upon millions of people to, to like what you're doing, to buy what you're doing, to rent a film of yours, to read uh, a book that you write, or whatever you might be putting out there in the world. You need the smallest viable audience. And what I mean that is a niche audience, someone who's going to be interested in what you're doing. If you're making a horror movie and it's a very broad horror movie, finding that smallest viable audience is going to be difficult because you're going to try to do brand marketing as opposed to direct marketing. Now, brand marketing is what the studios do. Brand marketing is spending $200 million to put the Justice League movie out on every billboard, banner, uh, television um, ads, uh, commercials, uh, YouTube, everywhere you can see as you get closer and closer to the release date, you become aware of the film that they're trying to promote. This, in this case, would be Justice League. The only way they can find out if any of this marketing that they did made any sort of impact is on the opening box office receipts. That is the way they measure their analytics to see 
what worked, what didn't work. Because when you put up a billboard uh, or buy a magazine ad like old traditional media, you have no idea if one person saw that ad and then impact got impacted by that to do something about it or millions did. You just don't know. But when you're the studio, you have that that um, flexibility because you have obscene amounts of money to put into it. So that's called brand marketing. Just like Coca-Cola puts out just tons and tons of brand awareness. They spent millions upon millions of dollars over the course of the last decades to make sure that everybody on the planet knows what Coca-Cola is. If you have that kind of budget as an independent filmmaker, God bless you. But if it, if you don't, then you've got to focus on direct marketing. Direct marketing is when you focus on a specific group of people and then you start focusing your message to that group. And now with the power of Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube ads, all of those kind of ads that are available through social media, free and paid, you can actually see how many people click, how many people are actually taking action, buying or renting. You can see instantly where your dollars or your energy is going towards. And you, as an independent filmmaker, have access to all of this. Again, anytime you've posted anything up on your social media feeds, regardless of the platform, you're marketing. You want people to see what you're doing. You, If it's a writing an article, it's a blog, it's a podcast, whatever it is, you want people to see what you're doing and you are marketing. So I just want to get that concept in your heads because a lot of you think, well, I'm not good at marketing or I'm not a marketer or I, I don't really know anything about how to get the word out there. Of course you do. You know the basics and you have the power that companies 50 years ago would have killed for and it's on your fingertips and you could do so much of it for free by building your tribes, by building up people who are interested in what you're doing. It is doable. It is possible. Many people have done it before you and many people will do it after you. But the question you have to ask yourself is, am I going to do it? Because I truly, truly believe that filmmakers in today's world that do not understand the basics of marketing, social media, brand building, will not succeed in the business. Period. Let me repeat that. Filmmakers who do not understand marketing, social media, and branding will not succeed as an independent filmmaker. Sure, there will be outliers. Sure, you'll, some of you will make the next great independent film that will get into Sundance and you will have a ride of your life. Sure, that will happen once or twice here or there. But those are outliers. That is not the norm. If you want to build a business around your art, around your filmmaking, around yourself as a filmmaker, you need to understand marketing, social media, and branding. And everything I'm saying is not just about promoting a movie or promoting a product. It's also about building you up, building yourself as a brand up. And when I say building a brand, a lot of people think, well, I'm not Nike. I'm not Apple. Of course not. But I promise you that if you are able to build up a, a brand as a filmmaker, like many of the, the guests that I've been able to do, who are trying to get attention from other people to get jobs, uh, other people to get you know commercial jobs, music video jobs, if you build up a brand around whatever kind of art you're trying to create, you will stand out from all of the competition. No matter if they're better than you, more experienced than you, have better connections than you do. If you're able to build up your personal brand, you will be able to succeed in places you cannot even comprehend now. It is truly invaluable for you to understand these concepts. Now, there's a lot of great books, a lot of great courses out there that will help you down this road. I'm not telling you that you need to be an expert on everything Facebook, Twitter, social, you know, Snapchat, all the different social media platforms. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that you need a degree in marketing or in brand management or anything like that. But the basic simple things that you need to do, build a website for yourself, first of all. Let's talk about branding yourself. You build a website for yourself, first of all, okay? You start creating content for that website. 
content that is wrapped around what you want to be known for, whether that be directing, writing, production design, cinematography, whatever part, whatever art that you are practicing and you want to be known for, build content around that. That could be videos showing you doing it constantly, creating a vlog where you then post it on YouTube. And again, also another thing, guys, many people create their brands on different platforms. And the more platforms you could do it, the better. But some people are stronger in certain platforms than others. My main platform is podcasting. You know, I'm one of the larger filmmaking podcasts out there. Um, But like someone like Jacob Owens, who's a well-known music video director, he created Buff Nerds and he created this insane YouTube empire, uh, meaning that people like he has almost a million followers on YouTube. And I'm going to have Jacob on the show uh, in the coming weeks. And I really drill him about how to build a brand and how he did everything from the ground up. And, you know, people do it on Instagram. People do it on Twitter and on Facebook and all these other platforms. The problem I always see with building your brand on a platform is that you're playing in someone else's sandbox. So you can do that, and it's wonderful and great to do it, but always have a website to go back to, a hub that you can create and and kind of spawn everything out of. So no matter if all the social media platforms go away tomorrow, you still have a website where people know you and can go follow what you're doing. And I know a lot of you listening right now are like, Alex, that's so much work. I, I can barely just do the art, just barely create the work that I'm trying to create. I hate to tell you guys, but this is the new reality of where we live and where we're going. If you think it's bad, now wait until there's another 30 or 40% of people trying to break into this business and trying to compete uh, against you for jobs and opportunities. You need something to set yourself apart from everybody else. And what I'm laying out for you right now is one of the major keys of doing that. Now let's talk about content for a second and creating content to build that brand, whatever that brand might be. If it's personal branding, if it's a movie that you're trying to put out or a product that you're trying to put out. Let's just, I'm going to go back, I'm going to go way back to 2005. When I released my short film, Broken, I've sm- spoken about this this project many times. Uh, I did an entire episode about how I sold it and everything. But I want I to just present it as an example. Back in 2005, there was uh, not many short films being sold on DVDs and people actually buying it. So what did I do to make my little short film with no stars in it, a little action film shot in Florida, uh, you know, you know, on mini DV, no less. How did I get that to stand out? Well, what I did is, first of all, I said, I'm going to put it on DVD and I'm going to try to sell it. And then I said to myself, well, how am I going to be able to do that? How am I going to be able to, to, you know, set myself apart from all these other short films that are even trying to get some attention, let alone trying to sell it? So then I created content. I created almost four hours or four and a half hours, I forget, of making of content, creating value to my smallest viable audience, which was filmmakers, because I knew that audience, because I am one of those audience members. So I wanted to create that product. And the second I was able to do that, I started creating product and putting it out on YouTube, posting it everywhere. At that moment, we did have a website, so I had people coming back to the website. I was doing all this instinctually. I didn't read anything about it. I didn't understand what I was doing, but I was doing it instinctually. And by the time that that DVD came out, it blew up it, to the point where we sold almost 5,000 or over 5,000 DVDs and made a lot of money with a short film back when nobody else was doing it. Now, that same plan won't work today, so don't try it. It's not going to work today because the world is different today. There's a lot more of that content out there, so you have to create something else. You have to do something else to stand up above the crowd. And what I'm laying out in this, this podcast will help you to do that. Same thing goes for films. Same thing goes for production companies. Creating content, building that brand up, um, providing value to the audience that you're trying to create. Understanding if you're going to spend money, what kind of money are you going to spend? I cannot tell you how many filmmakers that I consult on a daily basis who say the same thing. Look, we've got five or $10,000 to put into marketing and I go, you've got a romantic comedy. 
with no stars in it. And nobody knows who you are. Nobody knows who this film is because you haven't said a damn thing about it through this entire process of making it. You haven't built up any sort of awareness for it. And you think $10,000 is going to dent anything? It won't. By that time, it's going to be very difficult to generate any sort of interest, any sort of awareness for that project. They didn't think it through from the beginning of when they created it all the way out to the end. So many of you who are listening to this will say, Alex, I just don't want to think about marketing it while I'm writing the script. Well, maybe not while you're writing the script, but when you're in pre-production, you better think about marketing. You better think about how you're going to get this out there because you have to. If not, you're dead. And I've seen it happen a million times. I cannot tell you. Weekly, I get these calls. Weekly, I do consultations. Uh, with with filmmakers who are just like, I don't know where to go with this. I'm like, you've got to build up this, this situation and understand how you're going to get your film out there. Just basically because they didn't understand the difference between brand marketing and direct marketing. They think that $10,000 of buying some Facebook ads for people who like romantic comedies is going to do a thing. You're just going to put more money in, in uh, Zuck's pocket, the owner of Facebook, Zuckerberg's pocket. That's it. That's all you are doing. Just understand that you cannot play in the branding marketing game. You have to go direct marketing. You have to niche. You've got to be razor focused. You've got to hit that target when you're trying to sell your movie, when you're trying to market that movie, when you're trying to market yourself as anything. You've got to be razor thin. Just go because you don't have a money hose. You don't have a money hose to throw out to just kind of like shotgun whatever you're trying to do or get out there, the message you're trying to get out there. And one other thing I'd like to say about this topic, and you can see I'm very passionate about this because I I felt something in my bones said that I needed to do this podcast today, that I needed to get this message out to you guys today. I don't know why. I just woke up this morning and said, you know what? I'm going to talk about branding, marketing, and social media. And I think it's something that uh, I need to kind of reiterate every once in a while to you guys because things are changing so rapidly almost on a weekly basis on on how to get yourself out there. Now, the other thing I want to say about this topic is one word, the one word, which is the lesson that took me the longest to learn as the, as the question I always ask in my, in my podcast, the question that, that took you the longest to learn, whether in life or in the film business, I think it's both in the film business as in life, is a one-word answer. And it's something that you guys have to understand very clearly if you're going to make it, if you're going to be able to achieve your dream, patience. I know you don't like to hear it. I didn't. I didn't want to hear it at all when I was younger. But you have to understand that patience is what you're going to need to get all of the things I'm talking about forward. You're going to need a year head time to build up awareness for a feature film. You're going to have to be pounding it day in, day out getting your brand out there, whether it be the brand of the movie, whether it be the brand of yourself, of your production company, or of whatever you're trying to achieve. You're going to take, it's going to take time. It's taken me four, almost four years. In July, it'll be four years to get the Indie Film Hustle brand out there in a large way. And it's getting larger every day. Why? Because I have momentum. Because I started hustling hard Every day I show up. You guys know I show up every single day to work. And I come in and I create content. And I create value for my tribe. And I keep putting it out there every single day, every single week. Week in, week out. Holidays, Christmas, Thanksgiving, it's out there. Why? Because that's what you have to do. That's what you have to to kind of get out there. And that's the kind of value that you have to provide for the audience that you're trying to get to. Don't preach. Don't shout. Hey, look at me. Look at me. Look at my movie. Provide value in one way, shape, or form for whatever you're trying to create. Do you know how many you know, course instructors I've met who are, let's say, middle-of-the-road cinematographers? I'm just going to say it. Middle-of-the-road cinematographers don't have any huge credits, but they're more than capable. They're more than capable. But what they've done to create their brand is create online courses to show people that they know what they're doing, 
to become a leader in that space. And by doing that, creating an online course about cinematography or about editing or about color grading or about whatever, all of a sudden, their status rises within the business because they're like, wow, if this guy or this girl has made 10 courses on cinematography, they must know what they're doing. Let's hire him or let's hire her to do this. Or they have this huge class on Skillshare or Udemy or on IFH TV or wherever, all of a sudden, it gives you a different persona that you're an educator, that you're so prolific in what you're doing that you're now educating others in how to do it. And doesn't and you don't need to be a master class level instructor to do that. All you have to do is be just a little bit ahead of everybody else that you're teaching. That's all a teacher is. Someone who knows just a little bit more. Someone who can teach you something. But do you see the branding in that? Do you see that even if they're not the best in the world? You know, they're not the best in what they do in the world. But yet, they've been able to build a brand around themselves doing it. And it it rises their status within the business. So when a potential client or a potential employer looks them up and they said, wow, this guy's created a YouTube channel that has 100,000 followers and all he does is talk about editing or all all he talks about is about cinematography. All she talks about is writing. I'm going to hire her to consult. I'm going to hire her to be my cinematographer. I'm going to hire this guy to be my post-supervisor because all he does is talk about post-production. It's an amazing process. But I want you guys to see all these examples because I want you to be able to do it for yourselves. And if you don't do one of these many options, I've given you five or ten different ways to build your brand up, to build your your company's brand up or your film's brand up. If you don't do one of these things, you will not make it. I promise you, you will not make it. If you're going to just do it the old way like they did back in the 90s, you know, which is where my mind was stuck for so many damn years, where you think you're going to make an independent film, go to some festivals, and then all of a sudden your career is going to go off the ground. That's not the way the world works today. The sooner you understand that, the better. Like I said, there's always outliers. But generally speaking, for the rest of us, that's not going to work. It's going to be a long grind, a good grind, a journey to get attention, to get uh, you know, rise in status within whatever field you're trying to get into, all of those things in order to move forward and closer to the dream that you're trying to achieve. And one last thing I'm going to say that it's kind of about marketing, kind of not about marketing, but I think it's something that needs to be said. I've said it before, but I'm going to say it again. I personally love the journey now. I personally love the grind of every day. And I, I call it grind, but I use grind as a, a very loving word. I love it. I wake up every morning excited to do this every day. I love doing what I do. And you've got to fall in love with your grind, with your journey. Because so many of us are focused on the destination. And I was. I would say I'm not happy until I get there. You'll never be happy, guys. I promise you, you'll never be happy. Because when you get to those points, then there's nothing else. Then you've got to start another journey. Where are you going to spend most of your time? On the journey or at the destination? You know, if you're going to take a road trip, where are you going to spend most of your time? You're going to spend most of your time on the way to the destination. And then you're at the destination for a little while, then you're gone and you're on to the next journey. You've got to learn how to love the journey. And if you're on a journey right now that you're not loving, you need to ask yourself, how can I change that? How can I change my life? How can I change my world in a way that I love what I do every day? I know a lot of you have different situations, different scenarios in your life right now, financial concerns. I get all that. But you just got to ask yourself one simple question. How bad do you want it? Sit there for a second and ask yourself that question. How bad do you want it? Am I willing to put in the work to get to where I want to be? That is the question you have to ask yourself. Look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself that question. 
What do I need to do? What am I willing to do to get to my dream? Am I willing not to watch Game of Thrones tonight for an hour so I can read something, listen to a book, listen to a podcast, take an online course to educate myself, to move myself forward in a place where I need to be in my life? These are things you need to ask yourself, guys. And this goes along with the marketing and the branding because it's work. It's My God, it's work. I promise you it's going to be work. But I tell you it will pay off. All of you are marketers, whether you know it or not, whether you like it or not. Every time you post something, you're a marketer. Anytime you're on social media, you're a marketer. When you try to go to a young lady or a young man and try to pick them up in a bar, you're marketing yourself to them. Everything is marketing. Everything is branding. You need to understand these concepts. In the future, I'm going to create more resources for you guys in regards to marketing and branding, even more than I have in the past. Be a little bit more focused. Be a little bit more actionable stuff that you can actually really go out and do. And I'm going to just keep pounding you guys because I want you to succeed. I don't want to see you give up. I don't want to see you not get to the fullest potential that you have. Why are we here if it's not to follow our effing dreams? I hope this podcast lit a fire in your butt. Uh, If you want to read a couple of good books that I recommend, I'm going to put these books in the show notes. Uh, You've got to read Seth Godin. Seth Godin is an amazing, amazing guy. And some of his books are invaluable. You need to read The Purple Cow. You need to read This is Marketing, and you need to read Tribes. Those three books will help you dramatically on understanding marketing and branding and social media. Another another couple books you need to read are Crush It by Gary Vanderchuk and Crushing It by Gary Vanderchuk, as well as The Thank You Economy by Gary V. Those books, if you can read those books, you can go on Audible and get them. Uh, You can actually sign up for Audible for free. I'll I'll put the link in the description or go to uh, freefilmbooks.com and you can sign up for a free uh, account and get one of these books for free for 30 days. It's that simple and at least you can get the ball rolling Uh, or buy these books, however you want to uh, ingest them. Get these, these, these six books that I just threw out there. There's many more. I plan to do more and more of this kind of stuff in the future creating more valuable content in regards to marketing, branding, and getting you guys to get up off your butts and do it. That's what I want you to do. I don't want you to complain. I don't want you to hide behind things. I don't want you to be afraid. You've got to go out there and do it. All right? I hope this episode uh, was valuable to you and will help you on your journey, which you should be loving, by the way, uh, getting to where you need to be. Please share this uh, episode. Please share the podcast with as many people as you can. I want this information to get out there to as many people as humanly possible uh, because I really am so passionate about this work that I do, this this message that I'm trying to get out there. I want it to get out there to as many people as, as, as I can to. And I need you guys, the tribe, to help with that. So I really, truly appreciate it. If you want links to the books and things I talked about in this episode, head over to IndieFilmHustle.com forward slash 294 for the show notes. And guys, if you haven't heard, but I doubt that you haven't, but if you haven't heard, I wrote a book and it's called Shooting for the Mob. And it is my crazy misadventures trying to make a $20 million film for a mobster. And uh, I was taken out through Hollywood, met billion dollar producers Big, giant movie stars. I even got to meet Batman, which the story is in the book, so you'll have to read it there. Uh, But if you want to pre-order the book, head over to IndieFilmHustle.com forward slash mob. That's M-O-B. IndieFilmHustle.com forward slash mob. Pre-order it on Amazon. It comes out February 22nd. Please spread the word. I really want to get this story out there. It is not only a cool story about how not to follow your dream as a filmmaker in the business and the crazy misadventures through Hollywood and the mafia, but it also is a story about how to 
uh, not sell your soul to the devil to make your dream come true, how not to compromise your own morals, how to stand up for yourself, how to get out of bad situations, and many other things that I think are more universal for everybody uh, listening. So thank you guys again so, so much. Uh, There's a ton of great stuff coming up on IFH TV. Tomorrow we're dumping a whole bunch of new stuff on the platform. And don't forget, February 1st, IFH TV goes up to the regular price of $13.99 a month. So if you're already in at $10.99, you're in there until you leave. So you're grandfathered in. But if you want to take advantage, you want to check things out for uh, Indie Film Hustle TV, do it before the end of the month. If not, it's going to go up to $13.99 a month, and it will not go back down to $10.99 a month. So thank you again so much for listening. I really, really hope this, this episode helped you guys out. And as always, keep that hustle going. Keep that dream alive. And I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to the Indie Film Hustle podcast at IndieFilmHustle.com. That's I-N-D-I-E-F-I-L-M-H-U-S-T-L-E.com. 